That is why they are going to be champions. It really is as simple as that. Now, look, I justifiably get a lot of stick for some of the predictions that I have made, but I need it to be known that I have called Arsenal winning the league from day dot. I told you that Arsenal were going to win the league from the second this season kicked off. When we did our pre-season predictions, I said that Arsenal were going to win the league. And there was a myriad of reasons as to why I thought it was going to go their way. And I have never been more sure that it will go their way than I am now. That was a title-winning performance from Arsenal away at Brentford. That is what champions do. They go away from home. They don't get out of second gear. They trudge along. But crucially, they find a way. And we now know that they are totally capable of winning the league. On the same weekend that City and Liverpool both drop points, Arsenal must be waiting. Those weekends are precious. Those weekends are rare. Both of Arsenal's biggest rivals drop points earlier in the day. Arsenal know exactly what they have to do. They have witnessed their two rivals slog out a point each. So there is an opportunity and they must make the most of those opportunities. And they did because that is what champions do. Arsenal also had the opportunity to go top of the league. Now that's symbolic. Being top of the league after this amount of games, it means something. Dethroning one of your title rivals, it means something. You're there, you're at the top, you're at the zenith. You are currently the king. They had the opportunity to go top and they took it. You do not turn it down. You can't turn it down. And they didn't. Equally, I think you need to make Manchester City pay. Manchester City, yet again, have conceded a fairly late goal against one of the bigger clubs. Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, they have conceded a fairly late goal. You can't let them get away with that. When they slip up, when Manchester City, the treble winners, when they show you a slight chink in their armour, you must capitalise, you must make sure that you're there waiting. And equally, when you're playing Brentford, you have to win the game if you want to win the league. You know, people talk about how good Brentford are, and yet I rate Thomas Frank, and we're a valiant team. Blah, blah, blah. You beat Brentford if you want to win the league. And it's not really about performance. It's not really about style of play. It's about simply accruing the three points. And off the back of the scoreline earlier in the day, Arsenal couldn't slip. The performance is irrelevant. Simply win. And I tell you what, if you are an Arsenal fan who is moaning today about anything, I, I honestly think you're an idiot. Your team have found a way to go top of the league. You demonstrated the qualities that are about being champions. You showed them in abundance. Look, sometimes beautiful, free-flowing, attacking, expansive football is the order of the day. Sometimes it really is important. Other times, win. Just win. Just win. Find a way. And on a bitterly cold night, a night game, a grim game, a game that looked like it could have been limping into a draw, a game that wasn't really going Arsenal's way, the Trossard moment, Ramsdale looking a bit dodge early. You're like, this could go wrong for Arsenal here. And they managed to make sure that it didn't. You know, at this point last year, Arsenal were playing some of the best, most beautiful, most pure, most poetic football that they have ever played under Mikel Arteta, obviously, under Mikel Arteta. This time last year, 12 months ago, just before the World Cup, Arsenal were sensational, weren't they? Just before Gabriel Jesus went to the World Cup, played against Cameroon, got that injury, Arsenal were what? About 10 points clear at this point? They were scoring goals, they were playing fantastic football. You know, you had uh, Bukayo Saka, one of the best players in the world. Gabriel Jesus landed and was doing the business. Everything was going perfectly. They were knocking it around, they were doing everything that they would dream to do. This time, it's not really happening. They're top of the league. This time, they probably haven't set the world alight. They're top of the league. Do you know why? Because, yeah, they haven't got out of second gear. It's not pretty. It's not easy on the eye. They're putting their fans through the ringer a bit. You know, they're not winning 3-4-0, and four nil, going down to Bournemouth. Um... Odegaard scoring twice, linking up beautifully with uh, Gabriel Jesus as they were last year in away games. They're making their fans work for it. You know, on the edge, I follow a lot of Arsenal fans, a lot of Arsenal fans in my family who were there yesterday. They're struggling, worried. But Arsenal were playing with a grit and a determination 
that suggests that they will win the league. Say they go down there and win 4-0. Yeah, okay, fine. But you can't do that every week. What you can do every week, though, is find a way. And you know what? The performances will come. What we saw was the hallmark of champions. And how typical. It's Kai Havertz who sends them top of the league. Kai Havertz. And look, what I'm not going to do, I've been, I feel like at least I've been very complimentary and fair to Arsenal on this video. I'm not now going to buy into this Kai Havertz thing. Like I've got a few WhatsApp groups full of Arsenal fans that are popping off. This is the moment. This is his defining moment. The seminal moment in Kai Havertz's Arsenal career. This is it. And I'm like, no, no, slow down. Slow down and listen to my reasons. If you're an Arsenal fan, don't tune out. In fact, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments because I feel like this is going to sound very harsh, but please do hear me out. Saying that this is the moment, right? Do you remember when he was given that fairly charitable goal, the penalty? Mikel Arteta came out afterwards, didn't he? And he spoke about what that goal meant. And he basically said, this is it. This is his moment. He is going to come good from here. I remember when he scored that goal, Mikel Arteta's actual words were, that is probably going to change everything for Havertz. And it didn't. Did it? It didn't. I've seen it before. I've seen Kyle Havertz score a hat-trick for Chelsea, right, in the League Cup against Barnsley, I think. That was going to change everything. It didn't. I've seen Kai Havertz win Chelsea a European Cup. The last game of the season that year, didn't have a great season, but he scored a goal in Portugal to stop Manchester City winning a European Cup, to plant himself in Chelsea folklore forever, to become a legend. And I thought this time next year, he is going to be the player. He's going to use that moment, stopping City winning the league, bringing Chelsea our second Champions League. He's going to use that moment to become the player that we were told he was going to be. He is going to have a season like no other now. The confidence that that is going to instill upon him. Next year, he is going to be unplayable. And he wasn't. So we have seen moments like this from Kai Havertz many times. And I believe that this will just be another one of those moments. Saka did well. Rice was a warrior. Saka whipped it in. Havertz stuck his head on it and the keeper made a pig's ear of it. And I'm not taking it away from him. It's a huge goal. It's certainly the biggest goal that he scored for Arsenal. But anyone trying to suggest that a last-minute goal against Brentford is somehow justifying the purchase, I'm going to have to passionately disagree. But it is nonetheless huge. Um, and look, when you score a goal like that, I think it's fair to say that you have announced your arrival. How you build on it? Look, I could be wrong. Let's see what he does from here on in. If he scores, what? Another five goals in the next 10 games? Maybe another winner? Maybe. Maybe. But we can't take anything away from him yesterday. You know, the game was just a stubborn, obstinate, painful, attritional derby, wasn't it? It wasn't really going anywhere. And look, it was a darting run at the far post, picked out by Saka. And that was, that was it. And, you know, obviously... Havertz will get the plaudits, but let's be totally honest. Didn't have a great game. I mean, Declan Rice, I just thought, again, was just a warrior. He is a warrior every week. He was the player that said this will not end nil-nil. He was the player that ensured that the game did not end nil-nil. Saka did well for the goal. Not enough, maybe, throughout the game, but did very well for the goal. But I thought Tommy Yasu was brilliant, you know? I really did. I, th I thought Tommy Yasu shone. I thought he had a brilliant game. And I also thought Zinchenko played well. I think I feel like Zinchenko gets a bit of stick from Arsenal fans sometimes, but I thought he played really well. I thought Tommy Yasu was excellent. Um, and it, they really are making the most of their squad and their players. So it was a massive day for Arsenal. A season-defining day for Arsenal. Huge moment for Kai Havertz, although I don't believe that it's going to have the impact that some do. But Arsenal are top of the league, and I am convinced that they are going to win the league. Remember, nobody's ever won four leagues in a row. To ask Manchester City to do that, you're asking them to break more records, create more history. Feels, feels like it's going Arsenal's way, which is a total and utter disaster. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It, 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 it especially interested to hear your thoughts on the points I raised about Kai Havertz. Looking forward to reading them. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you a little bit later. Might be going live later as well, so make sure you subscribe. Don't want to miss a live in a bit.